there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this inside four room macrame bracelet. And this is what it looks like. So you get four rows going across. And obviously you can do whatever design you want. This is just what I'll be showing you. And I've just finished mine off with Lofter Claw Clasp Extender Chain. But you can do whatever you want. So this is the bracelet I'm going to show you how to do. So if you want to learn how to do this, then stay tuned. So these are the things that we're going to need. Now you'll need some cord, and in this case, here I've got some 1mm leather cord, and this is what's going to be running down through your bracelet and basically building the foundation of your bracelet. This won't be going through any other beads. And then in this case, I'm using some Eslon cord, which is about 0.4mm. It doesn't have to be this specific that you use, it can be many other things. It can even be the same as this, as long as you make sure that they'll go through the beads then, doubled up. Um, otherwise, you can use things like embroidery thread, some thinner nylon thread, anything really that you can think of. And these are just the colours that I'm going to be using. And then, a selection of beads. Now these beads are just some round glass beads and they're about 6mm and they're the ones that are going to be running down through the centre of the bracelet in the middle and then here I've got some rondel beads just the same ones but in two different colours some black ones and then some white ones or clearer ones and these are about 6 by 4 mil. so these will be running down the outside of the bracelet on the outside rows and it's just to give the effect that I'm going to end up getting Again, you don't have to use these things specifically, you can use other types and sizes of beads as well, other shapes as well. So, just get your things together, and then let's get started. Now to get started, we'll first need to cut our cords. And in this case, the 1mm leather cord that I'm using, that'll be running down the middle of the bracelet, I need three lengths of that. And the length of these need to be about 40 to 50 centimeters, really only as long to go around your wrist and then a bit extra just depending what you want to do for the closure part. So you need to cut them and then you'll also need to cut some lengths off of your Eslon thread or cord if you're using that or whatever else you're using and you'll need six lengths of this in total. In this case I'm just using four of the black and then two of the blue that's just to achieve the pattern that I want to ma match the colours of my beads and that. But you just need six lengths of these in total. And each one needs to be about a metre and a half. So cut all your cords. And then let's get started making the bracelet. So in this case, I'm going to be working on the macrame board, which has these notches around the edges. It makes it a lot easier to work with. If you don't have that, just find another way of fastening down your work. And then I'm going to first get my lengths of my leather cord and just gather it all up in one end. And then I'm going to attach these to my board. So I just use one of the notches and put them through there. Make sure I leave a bit of a tail on the other side in case I want to do a sliding knot or something. Just so you have that option. And then also I'm just going to attach them at the bottom, just for now. And then you want to get all your Eslon card or whatever thread you're using out. As well also collect them together at the end. And then you just want to put them into the slot as well. And I just put them into the same slot. Because the first thing we need to do is just start off the bracelet before we get to the part where we add in the beads. So just add your cords and threads like this. And then I'm just going to actually release my leather cord again. And just separate out two, put one back in, and then just all these Eslon threads as well put into the same slot. So we now have 
one leather card and all the Eslon card in the same slot and we have two loose leather cards on the side. So to just start off the bracelet, before I start adding any beads, I just want to secure all these cards and threads in place and just make the first part basically. So I'm going to grab my loose leather cords and just make a couple of square knots around all of the other cords that I've got fastened down to my board. So around all the holding cords, like so. And just tighten that and finish off that square knot. I'm just going to do a couple of these. This is just to start off the bracelet basically. I always like to do a few square knots before I start adding in my beads because when you think about it, that's where the closure part will be. Um, and this will most likely be on the back side of your hand. So you don't want too many beads on there because it might get irritating or just drop what you're doing or something. Because if you're working with a desk or something, you can knock down on the table. So that's why I prefer to just do a few square knots first. I'm just going to do one more. How many you do is up to you. Comple completely personal preference. Like so. So there we started off the bracelet with our square knots. So now I've reached the point where I want to start adding in some beads. So what I'm going to do is release all of my Eslon cords, just like this. And I'm just going to then attach my two working cords of the leather into the bottom notches. And I'm just going to not attach them into the same one as this. Just leave one or two notches in between, just so you have a bit of space here. Where we're then going to add in the beads. And then you need to separate all your cords out or thread. So we have a six lengths of the thread. And what we'll need is I'm going to do a square knot around each of the holding cords, so each of my leather cords, just to get these rows started off. So I'm just going to basically bring my threads or cords into position. And there's no specific way of doing this, it's just whatever you think fits. And if you do use different colours, obviously put them where you want your pattern to go. So I've got one black one and one blue one to the one side and then I'm going to have two black ones around the middle one and then again one black one just going to bring it underneath to kind of get into the right position so one black one and then the one blue one around the outer one as well so these two belong to the outer one on the right side these two belong to the middle one and then these two belong to the outer one on the left side. So now what we want to do is just make one square knot with each of these. It doesn't matter which one you start with. You can start with the middle one if you want to or the other ones. So I'm just going to do a regular square knot like so but only working around the middle cord. So kind of pretend like the others aren't there. So, and then just bring it up and tighten that up all the way to where your cords are coming out of your original square knots and then the other half of it still just around the middle one like so this is just so we get into position 
And then what you can do is just fasten these at the bottom. Because now you've done the middle one. So just to get your cards out of the way really. And then I move to one of the sides. Make a square knot on here. On this side I start with my left card when I make my square knot, like so. And I'll finish it off with the other side. Like that. And then again you can always put these into the notches just to keep them out of the way until we finish doing this. And then we've got this side left. And what I like to do to it because if you're using different colours especially, you kind of achieve a pattern. So what I like to do is to make sure that I get the same pattern on both sides, which means on this side we need to start with the opposite side that we did on here. So I'll bring my right one over first and then I finish it off with my left one. And tighten that all the way up. And then I do my left side. Like so. Because then we will have achieved the exact same pattern in the way that the knot sits with the colours. And I'll be doing this throughout, so I'll be making sure that I switch which one I start with, depending what side I'm doing. So we've now done one square knot around each of your holding cards, or the, my, in my case the leather cards. So we're now ready to just start adding in some beads. Now this might seem like it's going to be quite difficult or quite confusing, but it isn't really. The only thing is that's a little bit tricky is you got a lot of cards that you're working with. So if you just try and always keep them kind of separated out to each their side, then it makes it a little bit easier to find to keep track of it really. So now to add in our first beads, what I'm going to do is just release my cards on here. And what we need is we just need this blue one first, so the inside one of them basically. And the other one you can kind of put into a notch again just to keep it out of the way. And then we want to release the cords from the middle, in my case the S long cord. And again, first we just need the one to the left side of the middle holding cord. So we'll need the two that are coming basically towards each other. So down through as if they were sitting in here. So you need these two cords now. Because now what we need to do is get the ends of them and then put a bead on. I can find the hole. There we go. So we put a bead onto one of them and then you want to get the end from the other cord or thread and then put that through as well in the same direction. So that's why you gotta just make sure that the beads that you're using the holes are large enough to take two of whatever kind of cord or thread you're using. And then pull that tight so it sits all the way up there and then you'll find it sits in between these two holding cords, your base cords. So that's attached. And now, you can put your threads and cords back in when you're not using them, just to keep them secure and to make sure that they don't get mixed up and tangled up in that. But what I'm going to do is release the ones on the other side. So I've released all three on this side but I'm going to put the one furthest to the right back in because we just need to then add the bead to these two. The exact same ones on this side but just in between here instead. So we'll do the same thing. Get a bead. Put it on to one card first. Grab the end of the other one. 
and then get that through as well like so and again pull that up so it sits in there between these two cards and then you can reattach these threads or cards at the bottom but I try and still keep them kind of in the place so they're still separated out so I can tell them apart easily like so so now what we need to do is secure all this in place the first thing I'm going to do is secure the middle so I'm going to grab my two black ones they're the ones that I originally used to go to do a square knot, single square knot around the middle cord so I'm going to grab them again and all I'm going to do is do that exact same thing, do a square knot around this middle cord only so my leather cord in the middle like so and I'm only grabbing that one and then you bring it up, tighten it and then that will tighten up and have your beads sit in place now finish off that square knot just around the middle one and bring it up and I'm just going to tighten the first one before I tighten the second one like so and then I'm going to bring these cords back down and put them into my notches but still separated out so they're in position and then I'm going to go back to the cords on the side so then in this case it's the blue one the one that we put through the bead, the other one and then the one loose on the side that we haven't used incorporating the beads yet now with this one, all I'm going to do, the first thing, I'm just going to add these two beads before I start adding the rondelles in, it's just to kind of get a more graduated look to it but all I'm going to do with this as well is do a single square knot around the outer cord so this one just like we did in the beginning to separate them out and remember on this side I started with my left one we'll just tighten that and finish off that square knot making sure it's nice and tight like so so now that particular bead on the left side it's nice and secured in place, it's not going to go anywhere. You can reattach your working cords. And then we need to move over to the ones on the other side. So you then want to release these two. So again the blue one that's coming through that bead on the right side and then the black one that we haven't used yet. And then for this, remember we're now on the other side so we need to start the square knot the opposite way so I just use the other cord to start it otherwise you just do a square knot again and tighten that and then the other side making sure the first one is tight and then bring the other one up like so and then we can just reattach the others to just keep everything separate and organized so we don't kind of mix up our cords so this is the first step, the first set of beads that we've added in so now we want to move on to the next row and basically all we're doing throughout now is exactly the same thing so we're using the exact same technique so we'll go back to releasing these two cords that we did before and they were the ones that went through the bead and that's what they need to do again now so grab one at a time and then put both of these cords through the bead that we're running down the middle of the bracelet So again, first one through, and then bring the other one through, oh. 
like so. And then you can just reattach your cords. So I've now added the bead on this side. So I'm going to go to the other side and release these cords. And these are the ones we added the beads onto before in the previous row. And that's what we're going to do again. So I'm going to get one cord at a time, get a bead, pull that through, get the other cord and put that through as well, the same way, same direction, like so. And then again, bring that up so it sits right there and then forms the next row. We can reattach the cords if we want to, just to keep everything organized and in place. And then your beads sit here, so we now need to secure them in place and also add in the rondelles on the sides, because that's what we're going to start doing in this row now. So first I'm just going to secure the very middle. So I release the two middle cords, one from each side, the ones that I use to make square knots around the middle one. And I'm going to just use them to secure this middle part and help secure these beads in place. So I just do my square knot like all the other times, just around the middle cord, like so. And tighten that, and then the other side of it to finish it off and secure it in place. Just making sure that the first part stays nice and tight, and then we tighten the second part. So now they sit where they need to sit, they're not going to move about too much anymore. I reattach my cords at the bottom of my board so they stay in place and out of the way. And then I move to one side first. It doesn't matter what side you do first or last, it's just purely personal preference. And just remember though how you do your square knot, that's the only thing. So on this side now, in this row, we're going to start incorporating the rondelles like I said. The way we do that is the very outside cord, which in my case is black, is the one of the previous row we just left out, we didn't do anything with it, we just brought it down. Now we're going to add a rondelle to this specific cord. So just put your cord through it and then it's going to come down and sit right here, right next to the row that you're making now. And then we need to secure this in place. So we just make a square knot just like we did before. The only difference is we now have a bead on this cord that we didn't before. So a square knot with these two, one coming through the bead, which in my case is blue, and then the very outside one around the outside holding cord. So I start from the left side because I'm on the left side. Tighten that and as you can see the new rondelle is going to sit there nicely in place. Finish off the square knot. Like so. And then tighten them making sure the first one is nice and tight before you tighten the second one, like so. So that's the rondelle on one side added in. So we reattach our cords to the notches on the board just to keep them out of the way and organized. So we now want to move to the other side and basically do the exact same thing. So we need to add our rondelle in here and then just secure it in place. So I'm going to release my cords on this side. So these two, the one from the bead, in my case a blue one, and then the one on the very outside. So like on the other side, on the very outside cord, we want to add in a rondelle. And let it fall all the way down. And it sits right next to there and completes the row that you're doing. And then we want to do the square knot around the very outside cord for this one, just to secure it all in place. 
remembering that now we're on the other side, we need to start with the opposite cord. So the cord coming from the other side. So I just try and remember on the left side I start with my left side and on the right side I start with my right cord. That's a way to try and remember it easily. Tighten that. Finish off that square knot. Still just around the outside cord, holding cord. Just tighten the first one in place and then tighten the second one, like so. And then this row is completely secured in place. You can reattach your cords to keep them organized, like so. And then we're back to, we need to now do the next row. And we're doing the exact same thing. So release your two cords the ones that are always going down here and through these beads on this row just keep adding your beads to them both the cords remember let it fall all the way down just reattach my cords just while I'm attaching the other bead. Put a bead on them. Like so, let it drop all the way down, and then I want to just secure the middle ones. So my two black ones in the middle, in my case they're black, but the ones I always use to make the square knot around the middle one, I'm just going to do that just to secure the beads in place. Like so, on the other side of it. Finish off the square knot. Like so. Reattach your cords. Move to one side first. Release your cords. Then before we make a knot, we need to just add in a rondel. Like so. And then I just use one of my black ones. That is, is the design that I want to end up making, like the pattern. But you can obviously do it whatever way you want. Use the colours and materials that you want to use. Make a square knot around here, starting with my left cord, because I'm on the left side. Tighten the first one before you tighten the second one. Like so. Reattach them and then move over to the other side, do the exact same thing. Add a rondel to the loose outer cord first, and let it fall all the way down, and then secure them in place with a square knot. Remembering I'm on my right side. So I'm going to start with my right cord. Like so. Finish that one off. Like that. And then that's your next row done. You reattach your cords in place, keep it all organized, and then you start out your bracelet here, and you just keep building the exact same way. And obviously these are just the materials that I'm using, but you can use a lot of different things. Obviously the cord can be different, 
Um, the beads as well, you don't have to use just rounds and rondelles, you can use other shapes and sizes as well. Like maybe try some chips on the outside instead of the rondelles, or even just rounds all around. So just play around with the design, otherwise keep going like this until you've reached the length that you need your bracelet to be. So I've now reached the full length of my bracelet with the part where I'm adding in the beads. And then I just want to remind you that the very last row, if you remember the very first one, we only added the two beads in the middle, not the ones on the outside. And you just want to do the same thing on the very last row that you do at the end. Just so they obviously are similar to each other. And again, just so it kind of tapers in nicely. So now we just want to finish off this end. And then to do that, again, we're just going to make sure that we have it looking the same way as the other end. So what we do is, all my cards are in position as if I was going to do another row. But to make sure that both ends look the same, I'm going to bring all my, in my case, my s long cards, into the middle slot of where my middle leather card is. Bring all of them into there. so. So they all sit in the middle slot. And then what we need to do is release the two outer leather cords and want to collect all these together just like we did at the other end when we started out. We did our square knots first. So that's what we're going to be copying at this end. So all you do is just get the ends of your leather cord, the outer ones, then just make some square knots with them and just do the same amount of square knots as you did at the other end. As you can see, you bring them together and finish off that square knot. And in the beginning, I did three. So I'm going to do three at this end as well, just to make sure that it's nice and even. And it looks similar. If you did more or less, you just do the same amount that you did at the other end. And the last one. And finish off that one. Like so. And there we go. We've now collected this end together. And now both ends look pretty much the same. With a section of square knots, the one row with only the inside beads, the full length of the bracelet, and then the same thing on the other side. And then all that's left to do is finish off your ends. So get rid of your working cords on both ends, and then finish off the bracelet however you want to finish it off. I have a video on a few different ways you can do that. You can do a sliding clasp, you can do card ends, it's completely up to you. And I'll link that video in the description box, so you can have a look at that if you want to. But otherwise, then that's how you make this four row macrame bracelet. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this square kumihimo braid. And this is what it looks like. So for this I've just used some rainbow satin cord, but you can also choose whatever colours you want and type of cord as well. But this is just to show the technique, how to do a square braid, so you basically have four distinct flat sides to your braid. 